Hello my friends, this is Wake Angel 2001 and I'm coming at you with a review of Iron Factory's IFEX 27 Shrike's Feather also known as a third party pseudo legends of Slipstream yes the female seeker who finally got a proper role in the cartoon again in Transformers Cyberverse and all of her Cyberverse toys absolutely suck so I just decided to go third party for her <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe maybe if they can make a, a version of her that isn't a Windblade remold or um, yeah, I, I do it. You I have reviewed the Takara Legends, which was a Windblade remold and is a good toy. But everything related to Cyberverse for her just sucks. Like her warrior figure doesn't even have knees. Like no, thank you. All right, so let's get her out of her very pretty box and take a look at her. So here is our little slipstream out of the packaging. She comes with only one external accessory. Accessory. It is a mount to allow you to put her plane mode onto a flight stand. It's very simple. I'll show you how it attaches later. And she has a very simple instruction sheet. It's uh, very basic, very, very close to what Hasbro puts in their instruction sheets. So yeah, nice and simple. She doesn't come with any other accessories or advertising material or anything. Um, now, when I first saw preview images of her on, on um, I believe it was 4chan I, saw first, I first saw, I assumed that she would basically be a Windblade remold. Um, <clears throat> or should I say, a Windsaber remold. I am happy to report that this is not the case. She is completely her own original mold with unique engineering. It's actually really quite amazing. She is just the most beautiful little thing. So let's break down her articulation real fast. She has ball jointed shoulders and you'd think that those null rays would get in the way because of how big they are, but they don't. Her arms have a full range of movement in almost every direction on, except, you know, that way. But you know, you can pull that off. <laughs> uh, she has ball jointed elbows, which afford a bicep swivel. Um, but her wrists do not move. Uh, she has a ball jointed head allowing for expressive tiltitude and she can look up so that she can fly while in in robot mode just like her just like her her big sis windblade uh, wind saber I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep making that mistake aren't I she has ball jointed hips and um, I remember when I had my wind saber figure for the first time her hips were a bit loose and I had to use some rubber cement to tighten them up but uh, but shrikes here. Um, they are perfectly, they're perfectly adequate. They are not loose ball joints at all. Um, no thigh swivel, although like the range in her hips is wide enough that I barely notice. And she has a solid 90 degree bend at the knee. And she has some ball jointed ankles, which can go all over the place. So, so you can get her into wide legged stances and she's very poseable and she can look properly ferocious pointing her pointing her null rays at ya and all all that kinds of stuff yeah I, I do think that she's really cool and uh, her wings are they they uh they move around a lot they are on ball joints which are tight enough to get to keep them in place however you want to put them but not so tight that you feel like they're gonna break. So, oh, that's great. So the figure is extremely well articulated and it just looks so darn good. Let's um, let's zoom in so that everybody can get a nice close up of her awesome character design. So let's just get a nice close up shot. Yep, she's got her little cockpit chest, although her cockpit is on her back. I guess that's just gonna be the cross that plane formers have to bear. Um, with the, she has her little uh, turbine boobies and um, you know her pleasingly feminine shape and her big gigantic boots. <laughs> These boots are made for stomping, and that's just what they'll do. I feel like if Enid was a transformer, this is what she'd be. Enid from OKKO. OK that is. <laughs> um, so yeah, she just looks so darn cute. And the figure does look pretty solid from the back, although there is a gigantic shelf of plastic, which is the back of her jet mode. 
but it's not too distracting. It's just a standard wing, wing backpack, which we've come to expect from all Seekers and Seeker-like plane transformers. So, uh, all said and done, she looks pretty darn good. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison with my other two Iron Factory figures. Um, of course, everybody who's watched my channel for a while knows that I am quite the Fembot collector, and I'm always willing to add to my metal harem. So, um, their take on RC and their take on, on Windblade. I think that, um, I think that she kind of combines the best elements of the two of these. In that, um, I remember criticizing this one for having this really cute robot mode, but a lackluster vehicle. And this one, well, there's nothing inherently wrong with either of its modes, but it does show that it's kind of their early work because her engineering isn't nearly as complex. So, like... She has, what I'm saying is that she has the engineering complexities and upgrades that this one has, whereas this one is much more basic. You know, like, like, there, you know, like, no articulated feet and just, like, hollow, hollow calves that allow the legs to fold all the way back. But, yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at. She, she basically combines the elements, all the best elements of both of her predecessors into one just adorable little package. Hey, I shot this after I finished recording and I just realized that there was one more hinge. Uh, you see over here um, on her back there is this one hinge here that is on a, it's on a double hinge here that kind of folds down like a back skirt. Oh this is really hard to do one handed because I don't have a tripod for this. But uh, yeah like this, this folds down is what I'm trying to get at. And um, you can fold it up, and it uh, it like gives her silhouette like like you know it, it gives her more of a of a silhouette because now her hips aren't hindered by some kind of skirt. Um, only problem is with that folded up, her her uh, her jetpack her her cockpit kibble now sticks out quite a bit more, and you can't get her wings to go back as far. So. It gives you a nicer silhouette from the front, but it kind of compromises the backpack. So it all depends on how you want to display her. But it is an option that you have. So I just wanted to throw that in there. I'm going to have a shot at transforming her on screen just to, just to see if it works. So let's... First you got to take her null rays off. They simply stick into pegs on her arms. Uh, you turn, turn her head around 180 degrees so she's looking behind herself and open up these little flaps on the backs of her wings. It's kind of cool how they're on this double hinge thing like an aileron. Uh, the cockpit folds on a double jointed stem to come around over her head. And you kind of pull out the little landing gear. Uh, the arms, you just got to... Um, let's just move them to the side for now. I'll, I'll, get, I'll deal with them in a second. Rotate the wings around and peg them into place just like that. Then there are slots on the backs of her elbows that go into pegs on the bottoms of her wings. This is the one part of the transformation I don't like because um, like there is no real effort to cover the arms whatsoever. Um, then pull out pull out the fins and the rudders or vertical stabilizers. Collapse the feet up into the little jet thingies. And then, here's a really cool thing. The leg collapses into itself, and as it does so, it pushes the landing gear out. Nice, right? I like how how the, the landing gear's engineering is part of the transformation. That is really cool. I mean... It's impressive when plane transformers have landing gear in the first place, but to have them to have them actually come out as a little bit of automorph, I always I always thought that that was cool. I think I think that that's cool that you have just that little bit of automorph, and uh, that's it. That's our play mode. That took about two minutes. So this is Slipstream's uh, little plane mode. Uh, she has a big old thingy on her back that you can stick weapons into, although her her own weapon does indeed peg up there, but that looks weird. 
The real place that you're supposed to peg the weapons in are, of course, the undersides of the wings. Or I suppose you can put them into her hands, too, but, you know, like, there's dedicated pegs here, so why would, why would you stick them in the hands? You might destabilize the transformation. Okay, so just push. Ah, come on, man. There we go. So yeah, that's that's the full look. Um, really nice. Little little hints of silver picked out right there so that it looks cool. Um, very sharp paint job on the cockpit. Much sharper than much sharper than uh, than than um, wind sabers. And look, they, there's even a streak of silver in in the tail fins. It's a very well realized play mode from like the top or the side. Not so much the bottom because um, it just looks like she's kind of tuck, tucked her legs in and, and is looking behind herself. Although, as I mentioned, I will bring out the flight display stand. It simply tucks in around her midriff just like this. And then you can go ahead and mount it on a flight stand. It seems to be a standard 5mm thing, so I'm pretty sure most flight stands would be compatible. Possibly even the one that Miku came with. Miku for Iron Titan, which is the technical name of Wind Saber. So, yes. And real quick, a uh, vehicle mode com um, com bleh, comparison. Uh, so we have, like I said, the, the oldest one, Wind Blade, which, um, Wind Saber, which does have a competent little vehicle mode, although the, the paint job wasn't exactly very sharp around the nose cone. Not Still not bad, very... Very basic little Leg Legends class jet, but perfectly serviceable. Then there was um, then there was RCs, which always kind of irritated me because um, it requires her accessories in order to hold together, and then like it doesn't even lay flat. Like it should be like this, but it keeps doing that. Never, I never liked this. I figured it it's kind of it's kind of a half-ass job. Not really a very good vehicle mode at all. But this, like I said, it does the job it does it it looks as at least as good as this actually it's it's a bit bigger like like uh, i guess that that's the thing the decepticons always have to be the bigger more impressive jets while autobot jets are always smaller and weaker that's kind of been a thing ever since uh, they ever since the g1 cartoon with um with power glide who was like a, a little nowhere near as impressive a jet as any of the seekers <laughs> Um, and then of course, like, it has a place to put its accessories properly, but doesn't require them. So yes, that is my ultimate comparison. I think this is probably, I mean, it, of course, it's a later generation toy, so of course it's going to be an improvement on the previous ones. So yeah, she's actually really, really great. So if you are a, if you're a fan of little miniature transformers, a fan of lady transformers, or just a fan of Slipstream, then this is really a fantastic little toy. It only costs 20 bucks, so it's a, it costs about as much as a deluxe, which might be a little bit pricey considering it's the size of a Legends, but it's very well engineered and easily on par with any deluxe out there right now. Well, almost. Certainly better than anything you can get from the Cyberverse toy line because the Cyberverse toy line kind of sucks. So, um, that's my opinion on it. And, uh, I hope you like it and, uh, consider getting her. This is Blake Angel 2001 signing off.